This is our, our warehouse here. This is the headquarters in Tarpon Springs. It's the sponge diving capital of the world. So we are a big time water community. This is where I grew up since I was a little one. And uh, so water has been a part of my life since I was born. We come from the water and we live in the water. That's right. <laughs> Me trying to say something funny. <laughs> Jake here is our warehouse manager and he builds the kayaks to order here. So he's getting ready to build the Zulu um, right now that Alex is going to try out. So Alex is watching the boat that he's gonna use get built, put together. And uh, then he's gonna try it out on the water for the first time on a Kaku, I do believe. Yeah, never been. Yeah. I've so been trying. It'll be cool. To get this done for like the last 20 years. Right. <laughs> All right. So we just moved in this brand new building in April, so it's not complete as you see behind me here. This is going to be the showroom that uh, we're working on. So hopefully we have the showroom done by April. Right now people just kind of come into a dirty warehouse to come see the boats. So Kevin, let's say I'm a customer and I want to buy a Kaku. Yeah. Ka can you tell me how you... How Kaku. Kaku. Yeah. Kaku. Kaku. Yeah. I'll never get it. Right. We're going to get it right. right. So let's say I want to buy one. Can okay. I come in here and buy one or do I? Absolutely. So I could order online and pick it up as well? Yeah, so if you do order it online, then we get it ready within 24 to 48 hours, depending on what day it is. If it's on the weekend, you know, it's not going to be ready till Monday. So we need a couple days to get it ready, but we get it ready. Now, some customers do walk in, come pick their color, mm -hmm. and they may go to lunch down at the sponge docks and come back and pick it up. But we build them to order, so. Um, nice. So where are you? Tarpon Springs, Florida. No, I know the address. Oh, 495 Brady Road, Unit A. And online. Tarpon Springs. At kakukayaks.com. Yeah, kakukayaks.com. You can order on there. We'll let you know when it's ready to come pick it up. Perfect. To the edit, I'm going to make sure you look nice. I always look good. <laughs> 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 um, that's right <laughs> that we used some ai to make me look better <laughs> exactly uh, gotta, see you are gonna have the same problem right down does there. that camera have ai the slow uh, me down has a no belly filter on it <laughs> but it only works on my 13 year old <laughs> Uh, I just go. Thirteen, man. He's he's tall. And he's like flat. I just yeah. go, I just go and go like this. I go. You don't know what you got. Like right, you don't right. know what you got. Yeah. He eats sugar. Enjoy it now. I, exactly. <laughs> he only eats sugar. <laughs> High metabolism when you're young. Kevin, but I was always like this. Yeah. Because back in Cuba we got no food, and oh, I always had a Cuba. belly. Yeah. Yeah, in Cuba. Okay. Yeah. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> uh, let's see. So when I came out of high school, I was like 147 pounds. Wow. And I went to the Army. And when I came out of AIT and everything, I weighed 180 pounds. Hmm. So from having three meals a day and working out and everything, boom, 147 to 180. And so then, you were rich. And then it's just been uphill from there. Yeah. You know, like they say, we get better with H. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I was thin and I never worked out. I was always, I was a skateboarder. Does know? that work out? Yeah, I was a skateboarder. So it was, but it was all high intense, you know, mm. cardio stuff. And then I, I could never put on weight. <laughs> so what, what do you think, uh, what's the idea behind putting the phones in the... The deck. Well, so all of my craft have a very flat deck. It, it needs, this is polyethylene, polyethylene is flexible and it, and it is subject to warping. So uh, the foam blocks give extra support to the big flat area. So if you want this big open deck without all the bells and whistles, some of the kayaks put there that's in your way, then you need a little extra support to the deck. So the foam block does that. You'll have a block here, a block here, a block there. So in between in these areas where it's a big flat area that gives extra support no that just went on video yeah i got you <laughs> how long are these 30. oh yeah. these are different they're deeper yeah so these tracks um all right because which i, I would do this in the walkthrough but let me get a track t-track 
Uh, these aren't bolted in yet, but. So the Zulu being that it has pedal drive, you're gonna have to have, you're gonna have to adjust the seat depending on the length of your leg to get the right length to the pedal so that the chair needs to be able to slide. So in a standard track like this, it, it slides okay now before bolts are in it, but as soon as bolts are in it, this thing gets caught up and, and it can be a pain to slide. This track I made where it raises up a little bit so it's over the bolt heads. So this slides nicely to be able to get the chair at the right length for your legs to the pedals. This also holds the, once you'll see once the chair's on here, this holds the front of the chair off of the pad just slightly. That way when you're sliding your chair, you're not tearing up the deck pad. My tracks are top load, which means this drops in at an angle and then it's made so that no matter how the track goes, it guides it into its locking spot or whatever you want to call that. So if you just lose just enough, you're going to have an easier time rolling that back and forth than you would on a normal. Right. So if this was right up against the bolts, the way this track would be, if this is constantly going to get caught on those bolts. It's so a nightmare. It would yeah. be a pain in the butt to try and slide forward and backward. So this one, this track, what you can see there, it's raised up over the bolt head so that the, the track is able to slide nicely in there and not get caught on bolt heads. Because it could be frustrating that you want to move the seat and you can't. <laughs> right. Yeah. So especially if you're underwater. You're on the water and you're like trying to get it and it keeps getting caught up. That's a pain in the butt. Yeah. I, I would get frustrated. Yeah, I get frustrated all the time. <laughs> <laughs> The, you know what the problem uh, the problem that I have is that I get on so many kayaks and they're all different yeah and then I get used to something and then it doesn't work on another one and I'm like oh. right yeah yeah see I haven't been on other kayaks <laughs> well you don't need to <laughs> I only get on mine yeah yeah people ask me all the time like well how does this compare to this guy I have no idea go, uh, go talk to Ali <laughs> there's the answer to that question <laughs> All right, so we're laying, out, laying down the tracks. I could see why this model is the most popular one. And you know why? Why do you think that? Because it looks more like a kayak. Okay. Not M More like you sit on top kayaks, you have the wall. And of course, you got the ocean of adding a pedal drive. But then when you look at the voodoo, how do you say that again? Voodoo. Voodoo. You're looking more like a paddleboard experience. This one is also in the same area, but you still have uh, the walls. Yeah, so, I mean, they're both the same width at the, at the base. Um, the difference would be the Voodoo, you still maintain that same width at the deck level. Whereas the Kayak, the Zulu, for having the recess, you lose a little bit of deck space, but you get the recess. So some people feel more comfortable with that. And that's what I'm just saying. That it looks more like a kayak. That's why more yeah. people are willing to buy. It. Yeah. I mean, I think you probably know. Yeah. 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 Y
Hey, Kevin, yeah. Y5 power pole fittings. What's that? Y5 inserts for the, like the power pole plates. Y5 of them. Uh, <clears throat> well, is it because you want to put five motors on it? Well, with the five, so you can do, you can do duels. All right, so the fact is with the power pole, if you wanted to do duels here, power poles need at least, 30, I think it's 34, 35 inches apart from each other to really work in locking you from turning. So this, uh, putting them sideways, brings it out to around 34, 35 inches, but also moving them forward a little bit makes it so it's, it really locks you from being able to twist. You can also, uh, you can mount a single power pole here, but if you do end up having a rudder, then a power pole is not gonna work here. Or if you end up putting a motor a power pole is not going to work here. So now you can move the power pole to here, run your motor, or run your rudder, and you still got your power pole. I'm the only one that has multiple power pole mounts like this. So, yeah, it, it makes it unique. I, but I, it, it, it makes it functional. I don't know if I'm is this a memory or a dream, but I think I saw an iPalo unit on the back, like an SI3, once yeah. in the rear. Yeah. Yeah, so on the Zulu, you can mount an XI3, which is our eye guide. You can mount it in the front. We also have a power platform that you can mount back here, so you can mount it off the back. The, on the only thing with it mounted off the back is you lose the tracking feature. This will be our power platform, so now you can mount a GPS bow mount trailer motor off the back. Spot lock will still work back here. You can still steer with the remote, but you lose the tracking feature. Because mm -hmm. it, it, if you point it in a direction and you tell it to track to there, it, the motor will go there, but it can't control the bow, so eventually it'll pull you backwards. What if you put a rudder in the front? A rudder? On the front, yes. No. No? You, not going to work? I don't think so. Because the, there's people talking about putting rudders in front of the boat instead of the rear. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I want to test it. Can, mm. I, can I take one of those? <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. So so the motor. Let, let's think about that. The motor's back here. You tell it. I, I want to head straight to that point. The motor is going to go there. So I mean, if you did have something that would keep your bow straight to there too, I suppose it would work. What, what happens? Because I've done it. This is what I did initially for a GPS motor. But it your wind current is going to affect the nose. So let's, this motor's pushing here, your bow's here. As soon as wind or something pushes it here, that motor's gonna keep going to that spot and that bow's gonna keep moving like this and eventually it's gonna spin around and it's gonna be pulling you. So how will you use it? Let's, so now navigation, uh, autopilot is not available. Uh -huh. How will you use the bow mounted rolling motor in the rear? Like just, just for steering with a... Uh... Yeah, you can steer and spot lock will still work. So in some ways, spot lock, well, depending on the, the current, it could be beneficial, but... Right. So if the current is pulling this way and you have spot lock on, then you know you're always going to be facing... Like, say, let's say the bridge is here and I got spot lock set and the river's flowing this way. Well, at least I'm going to be constantly facing the bridge. Whereas if you had it in the bow and you had spot lock on, you may end up turning sideways or the back turning around. So you might end up being backwards to the bridge. So if that's just, it's the same thing with power pole, right? So you have to say like, all right, based on this current, I know I'm gonna spin this way. So then you have to make sure you position yourself correctly for which way you know the current's gonna pull you, so. Well, I always wanted to put a bow mounted trolling motor on the back instead of the front. Yeah. Cause I don't think nobody has done that. And yeah. they're probably having the same question. Well, you've done it. <laughs> but yeah. like, yeah. I don't think it's out there on YouTube like yeah. that. And I know they have questions. Oh, what if I want to put it in the, on the, in the rear instead of yeah. the bow? Yeah. And that would answer all those questions because I could run all those tests yeah. and show them like what happens right. and what works and what doesn't work. So I originally made this for the Voodoo because the Voodoo has no way of really putting a rudder in. So um, you, you either had to have a tiller handle motor or I like the idea of remote control. The thing I didn't like about having the bow mount motor on the back is even though you got the remote, you don't know what it's doing unless you turn and look. So I was constantly turning and seeing, making sure I'm not oversteering. When I would turn it off and fish a little bit and go to turn it back on, I had to turn around and see where it was at. 
I got so I got tired of constantly turning around and seeing what the motor was doing. Whereas the tiller handle one, I knew where it was. So that's what would annoy me on having the GPS motor on the back. Oh, I guess we could answer all those questions on our video. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, but um, so you, I guess you don't sell that many of this, right? I do actually. You do, I so. mean, for a while I didn't have them just because if it's something I don't really like, then yeah. I just kind of don't. But I had so many people asking for them, so we just <laughs> made a bunch more because I got. But I also have people that want the option. So yes, I have the Zulu I Guide, and I got my XI3 motor on the front. Sometimes I want to take my son with me and I want him sitting on the front. So I would like to move the motor to the back to open up room for my son or, you know. So it does have his benefits. Yeah, for sure. All right, perfect. Sorry, Jake from State Farm. We, uh... <laughs> so, Jake. <laughs> Wait, you gotta do that one. Oh, yeah, I forgot. There you oh, go, you're good. You are jacking my kayak. There you go. I'm sorry. If you want, I'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> you're too you're too smart, Jake. <laughs> Can you record that real quick? <laughs> I need that for my wife. Yeah. Every time she gives you a comment, you're gonna show her. Wait a second. I'll leave it in the video. <laughs> now now we just need a bikini lady so this video could get two million views. That's right. <laughs> Hey, ring them. You know, man, I mean, it's, it's work. It is. And you go out there and you bust your butt and you catch the killer fish of the day and you didn't make sure that your GoPro lens was clean. And you get back and you go to edit the film and there's a water spot right in the middle. I caught a giant jack the other day and like this thing was massive. And I keep trying to make it look bigger and I can't because the I was using a like a sort of like a 180 degree lens, lining uh, everything out. And you could see that I'm far away on the shot. Yeah. Like you could see the boat is long and you could probably tell that the fish is bigger than what it looks, but I, yeah. I can't make it look bigger. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sucks. Cause it was a big fish. It yeah. was like pulled hard too. All right, so we got the base model here. Now it's gonna be transformed into what? What are we gonna do with this? Come so on. Now we're going to transform. This is the base model. So if you wanted to get the Kaku Zulu for paddling or throwing a motor on it. This is what you would get. It's the, the base model setup. Now, Jake's gonna take this and he's gonna upgrade it to the pedal drive Zulu. You could buy this like this and it comes with this cover. And then you could buy the drive later and just remove that and put the drive in there and that's it. Oh, but you also have the rudder. Yeah, you also gotta put the rudder on. Hmm. So yeah, so this, this plate would come off, the mount for the pedal drive would go in and then we gotta put the rudder on because you gotta be able to steer it. And you could also put the SI3 unit. Can you put any other um, trolling motor or just that one? Um, here? Yeah. Yeah, you can put whatever, bow mount motor, but there's no point in putting another one on. There's only two motors on the market that only have a 36 inch shaft. You mm. don't want to put a 48 inch shaft or you're gonna have this motor that stands oh, up and funny out. big. Mm. So there's only two motors on the market that I know of as far as GPS motor. Yeah, but some people might wanna like just cut the shaft themselves. If they want to do it, like yeah, if they want to do that, knock yourself out. Yeah, boom. All right, Jake. <laughs> Jake is like, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I like to be behind the camera. This word the rudder is gonna That's go. That's the gadget that'll hold the, the rudder housing on. Nice kick blade to turn really nice. Steering handle. So this is something that if you buy the pedal drive kit, you could just do it yourself. Yeah. We ship them out. They, the parts come in a box. I have to, I put the mount on and then the rest has to be assembled because it would never make it through shipping. Mm. This goes in here. It's going to go on this side here and it's clear. To prevent from uh, the water from splashing up. Yeah. This is the housing for the cable for the, the rudder system. 
surgical precision. We got that dry for a minute or so. Oh, nice. So you heat up the plastic and then you just yeah, and then it. I just use this fancy tool here to form it so it doesn't suck in. You gotta, but the cool thing here, you have this hatch here, so if something happens, you can just put it through. Yep. There's a there's a track in here for it, and then we'll stick the cable right through the housing and rig the steering handle up. Sweet. Bro, that looks perfect. Years of practice. Like whenever I do that, it's, it's not that uniform. <laughs> I've learned to do, like instead of coming at it full torch, lower, and then just slowly, and then also know that like you can always reheat it, and like you don't have to get it that first first try time around. Just take a couple seconds, and then you can you can always hit it with the torch again. And well, this is actually a cable. It's a, some other people call it a steering rod, right? But We're actually, it's actually a cable. Pretty thick cable there. Just like we drew it up. Nice. That's, that's not breaking. <laughs> that is not breaking. That's the Loctite? Yeah, Loctite, there the, you go. The blue, so it's not permanent. Oh. The red's permanent. So that's kind of like a grease instead of being like a... Yeah, setting up a rotor takes a little bit of time, huh? Good thing I do it most days. Your housing for your rudder blade. Yeah, so it's got the, the tensioner here, so it, like the spring, so that way it'll, if you hit something, it'll pop back up. I just, I'm just turn it to tighten it a little bit. Hello. Good in. I'm going to walk over back here and get the right socket. Nice. So we always set it with a little little tilt that way. I make the walk of the 10.5. So a little tilt. Just a little, nothing crazy. And, and that liquid that you put in there, what what is that? It's just a grease, so it, a the, grease? so the nut doesn't. No, the only pedal so it'll come off, it goes on easier. So when somebody gets this and they're putting the rotor together, uh, they should go and get these parts, right? It doesn't yeah, they don't send them to Loctite. You you don't necessarily need that. I just don't want to fight with it. Yeah. If I, you know, not that it, you're gonna fight with it, but sometimes, you know how that goes. We're gonna tighten it and then just back it off a little. Because it gotta be a little that loose. Way, that way it can, yeah, do its thing. Yeah, gotta. It's not rigid. It could. And that's the steering arm that goes on the tracks. Yes, it's gonna go right in this track. But it's there, right? It's not gonna, you're not able to move it forward. I guess you, you could make a longer steering rod. You'd have to like change the cable out, make it longer, yeah. you know? So we typically put it in this, you know, our cable, we cut it at 65 inches, so. Got the rotor handle right here. Oh, that's nice. Look at this. Boom, you can see the rudder moving in the back. Can you see it? Nice. Wow. 
Oh, that's nice. That has a little cut that's in there. Yep. So just and makes it go straight through. Okay. Like it's not on the side. Nope. And then just feed it through here. Feed it through there. Sweet. That was easy, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> Depends on the angle. You really got to, like, crank when it. You're, when you're sitting there doing it, it's just this. Yeah. But it's weird. You, you come on this side and you got to, like, work for it. Yeah. Boom. Lock it down. Lock it down. And there you go. Rotor's out of the water. And, yeah, can't turn it because it's already locked down. Line them up. And, and that's why I, I really like cell phones to film sometimes. Because you can get it underneath. Yeah, you could get it, like, right there. You could go do more personal shots because I mean the camera is nice and everything, but it won't be able to get in here. No. So this is gonna house that PDL drive. Yes, and then we got another piece of mount that'll go on top. Bro, it looks like you do this every day. <laughs> I think this one knew it was on camera, so to act right. Usually I fight with them way more than that. <laughs> It is solid there, it's not gonna move. And it's not even bolted in all the way. Well, yeah, I guess if you're not gonna use a pedal drive, just remove that. Yeah. Four bolts, four bolts, and put in the black piece on top. And then you're, you're, you're back to having a base model, you know? Let's say I, I buy this, you, you ship this to me. It comes with just this base. It comes with the bottom mount on it. The second mount, I had to put it in myself. You're going to get it. You know, your clips are going to be on there. And then you're just going to have to take these four bolts, the two bolts here and the two bolts here, and attach it to the bottom. Because it sticks up too high to ship it. Right. So it's going to get damaged in shipping. So that's why we leave it off. But this plate is already installed. No. Also, the rotor system is not installed like this. You're going to have to do some of this stuff. But it's easy. It takes you a minute. Because uh, you don't want this piece breaking. The, the Gujung is not installed either, right? No, no. Basically, you're going to get it with the, the bottom mount here. I'm going to put the rubber housing that the cable is going to go through in. You're going to get your handle put together like this. You're just going to have to attach everything. I'm also seeing other ideas. You see this here? You could thread through the, the lines. They're probably going to come out, out probably from here. And then you could have full rest steering. Okay. I've never, I've they're, never done that. So they're right here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing that. Do you prefer the foot rest steering? Uh, Hands-free fishing. Hands-free. Yeah. I thought that might be what you might say. Yeah. Uh, 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 okay, Jake, what, what is all this work for, bro? Right what, what is that? Here's the pedal drive. I'll hold it for you. There you go. It clips in. Clips in. And then this piece right here, which we're not going to be able to do because of the bubble wrap. Well, maybe we are. Let's see. What is this for? It has a like a plate that sticks on it, but it won't slide through here, so we pop that off. Oh, I see. Let's see. Are we going to fit? And there you go. Sorry. Yep. Oh, because of that. Hold on. That bar on the yeah. cart won't hold the cart. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. And then this is going to slide. So you slide it. Like, uh, okay, so you're on the water. You just slide it in. And that's how it looks down. I'm oh, sorry. What am I saying? I need food. <laughs> so you're on the water. You slide it in. And then it's going to be locked it's gonna down. It's going to slide right into this plastic mount right here and then if you hit a rock or something it's gonna kick out yep but like that will hold it like if you put pressure on this drive that piece of plastic's gonna hold it. it's not gonna kick out nope and then pull it up and i i like this setup better because the native and others it's like the drive is there sticking out like it's it's high and especially with the native now it's like this drive is on top of the cover here. They okay. have a hatch. So this one is a lower profile when you don't want to use the drive or it's too shallow. 
And then you have there. And you put your plate on. And there you have it. We're finishing up the last touches here on the Sulu PDL Drive kayak. Boom, right there, cool. And we got the master builder here, Jake Nat from State Farm, finishing up the touches. Jake must be yeah, hating yeah. me today. I'm making him work overtime. It's all good. He'd rather be not fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, look at this. Bro, this looks nice. Looks like a really good fishing setup. And Jake, how much is this? How much money is this? It's like 2145. 2145 with the fellow drive, yeah. That is super inexpensive, bro. And guess what? Assemble right here in the US. Boom. If you're looking for a pedal drive kayak, this is an excellent value, man. And uh, can you tell the viewer what this thing has? What do you mean? Instant reverse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. This is a sweet set. Bro, look, the pictures and everything. Do not do it justice. If you're in Florida, anywhere near Tarpon, what do you call that? Tarpon Springs. There you go, that. Come and take a look, because you're gonna love it. Oh, dude, you, you have water demos, right? We do have a demo. We have an office on the water where you can come and demo. Just call, email, set up an appointment. Good to go. By appointments only. And guess what? You could have your boat rigged out by Jake, right, Jake? <laughs> I'll do it. You do it? Okay. Hey, you're, it's on record, so, you know? So I get paid to do. Yeah, oh, I, thought, I thought I took your job. You can have it if you want. <laughs> I'll have more time not to fish. <laughs> All right, boom. All right, we're done, right? We're done, right? We are done. We're done. Okay, can you give it a little bit of action on that? Oops. I don't know where I got all the, this energy, bro, because I'm, I'm, I'm beat up. <laughs> nice. Wow. Look, look. It looks nice. What is your 1,000% honest opinion about this setup? Do, am I lying? Does it look nice? Oh, it definitely looks nice. What, what made you come and work for, for Kaku? Uh, honestly, I had a buddy that went to high school with Kevin, and he told me, hey, Kevin's hiring. I already had a Wahoo. Oh. So I, I came down, talked to Kevin, and started working the next day. Nice. And then you upgraded to? I have a Voodoo. Yep. Voodoo. Wow. Sweet. Bro, this is nice. I like it. I like it. Can I take it home? What, what, what do you say? You can have it. You can what? Have this, one. this one right here. Really? It's yours. That's why you put this track in right Oh, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Made my day. Okay. But have you flipped this thing? I've never flipped mine. Oh, uh, I'm going to come back. We're going to do some flipping videos. Some flipping. <laughs> How about I hold the camera and you do the flipping this time? <laughs> no, no. I need a bigger guy. You're 6'1". I'll, I'll find I'm... somebody for you. <laughs> okay. All right. You gonna put the back first? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. I would, I mean, the Zulu, I'd usually put back first too, but I don't want the rudder. Thank <laughs> you. 